So what's your name again? Uh, Matt Reed. Matt Reed, yeah? Got a problem with the PC. All right, we'll hook you up. Yeah. This is Matt's first gaming PC build, but no display on the monitor despite LED lights on and the fan spinning when he powered it on for the first time. So he did some basic troubleshooting, stumbles across my channel, calls me up, and yes, I did actually fix it later on that day, but it took me a lot longer than it should have. And that's because he made one huge fundamental mistake when it comes to PC building. So the questions are, what mistake did he make? Number two, why did it take me longer to troubleshoot because of that mistake? Number three, what are the first time PC building mistakes did he make? And number four, I actually did post this on Facebook and on YouTube twice and many of you did get the concept and the issues correct. So will you get a shout out in today's video? Let's take it out. Hidden Tags and welcome, this is Ash from Hidden My Tech, helping you improve your relationship with, you guessed it, tech. Matt decided to go with a Ryzen 3 build. So he had £1,600 budget, about £1,000 for the case and everything inside, and the rest £600 for the monitor and other peripherals. Also at the time he contacted me, everything was bought brand new and was still within that initial return uh, warranty period to the seller. So he did try some basic troubleshooting, stumbled upon my channel and calls me up to goes, Hey Ash from Hill My Tech, you look like you know what you're doing. I go, really? That's cool. So I got no display on my monitor and I even swapped the HDMI cable from the GPU onto the video port of the motherboard. Still no display. So I go, okay, are you getting post? He goes, eh, get post? I go, come on, don't tell me you're one of these, please. Okay, you don't know what post is, you're not getting any beep code or anything. Eh, beep code? I go, all right, step back. Did you test your system outside of the case before you assembled it into the case to see if it was actually working? He goes, ah, nah. I go, why? So let's flex our troubleshooting muscle skills and let's also find out what first time PC building mistakes we need to avoid. At the time he dropped off the PC to me, he had not yet given me the full specs. So I asked him about compatibility. I thought that might be an issue. He goes to me, no, everything is compatible. And I go, how do you know? He goes, I use an app. I go, what app? He goes, something called Build Calls from iOS. I don't know that one. And I also used a PC building simulation game. I'm not sure which one exactly. So I go, okay, fair enough. Looks like you've done some homework. So while waiting for him to send me the full specs, I just started to do some basic troubleshooting. And as soon as I removed the side cover, I saw a few problems, which is why I posted this on Facebook and on our YouTube community tab. And I'll ask you guys, what do you think? Aside from the horrible cable management, what main problems can you see and could they be causing the no pause or no display on the monitor? And luckily many of you actually did point out the main problems, but nope, these were not the reasons to cause the no pause or no display. And at least one of you had to make a reference to the Verge PC build. Listen, we're gonna give Matt a bit of slack because he's a first time builder, but what about the Verge? What excuse did they have? Still a mystery. Anywho, the first main problem was the RAM configuration. Matt chose to put the RAM sticks in number three and number four slots. Now, most motherboards are gonna give you some sort of indication how to insert a dual configuration RAM. And in this case, it was RAM slot number two and number four. And that's probably quite standard for many motherboards, but don't assume you should check with the make and model reference manual for your one, because it can vary. Now, generally, you will find that you should not be putting two RAMs next to each other, certainly not one and two or three and four. Now, could that necessarily cause the no pause or no display? Mm, probably not, not in the modern motherboards anyway. Now, maybe in some rare cases. I do remember back in the DDR2 era, sometimes I would be installing just one single stick of RAM and if I did not follow the manual for where to put it, it probably would not pause, but generally, Putting the RAM sticks in the wrong slots will uh, probably just end up in you not having a proper dual configuration. It will lower your performance and your speed. In some cases, you might even just lose the performance of a whole RAM stick because the motherboard would not recognize it. And the second main thing which was problematic was absolutely the GPU was inserted in the wrong PCI slot. You should always put the graphics card in the first slot 
closest to the CPU, which will again benefit from higher bandwidth and higher speed, better performance altogether. But once again, this should not cause the PC not to pause or not to boot up or not to show any display on the monitor unless the graphics card is defective. So the first thing I did was to relocate both the RAM sticks and the GPU in their appropriate slots and uh, did a first pulse test and nothing on the monitor. I also did not get any beep code, but that was probably because there was no speaker cable present on the motherboard. Also, I thought at the time. Next, I disconnected anything that wasn't really necessary for the post test. And if you want more details on this, I've done a video on there. So I removed things like the NVMe SSD, the hard drive, extra fans, and anything I could see that is not needed for post test anyway. Still nothing. So at this point, I was suspecting maybe motherboard or CPU dead on arrival. And I thought if I had to test them, I would really need to breadboard. Plus, I'm not really sure how mad build this whole thing. So let me just breadboard the whole thing so I could kind of reverse build and see maybe something went wrong. At the same time, because I have quite a few other components to test with, so I swapped the GPU, the PSU, and things like that. And still, there was no post outside of the case. That's when I also inserted a speaker cable to listen for any potential codes. Finally, I got the full specs from Matt. And as soon as I took a look, I saw the problem and I was like kicking myself for having overlooked this very basic stuff. And yeah, you can see it on the screen. This Ryzen 3 3300X CPU is not compatible with this Ryzen motherboard from MSI because that's a Ryzen 2 board at least not out of the box without a BIOS flash update. So I jumped on to PC Pod Picker and I thought Matt said it was compatible. What's the issue? And as soon as I clicked those two components, yep, you get a red listing warning of compatibility. To be fair, to the untrained eye, if you're a first-time PC builder, even if you go on MSI's website, if you use other apps for compatibility, you may be getting a message to say, yeah, it should be compatible, which will be once you update the BIOS, but a lot of newcomers will not know that. Now, I'm not a big fan of doing BIOS flash updates. I'll explain the reasons later. But I had for my own build a Ryzen 2 2700X and a Ryzen 2 motherboard. So I thought I'll do some cross swaps just to make sure that there's nothing really dead in terms of the CPU and the motherboard. And indeed, I use my processor on uh, Matt's board and voila, we're having post and that confirmed the whole thing. At the same time, I kind of tested his uh, CPU, which is Ryzen 3 onto my uh, Ryzen 2 board and that did not post. So we're kind of almost there. So the last thing I did was we went to MSI website, downloaded the latest BIOS, stuck it onto a USB and left my CPU Ryzen 2 on his board, booted up, updated the BIOS and then pop his CPU back onto his own motherboard and Bob's your uncle, everything was posting up. The only difference is obviously when we did the initial post, we had a nice looking uh, UEFI layout, but with the updated one, it was a gray, ugly looking, uh, sluggish to use with a mouse uh, layout, which I did not really like. But as long as it would give us pause, who cares? I also find out that the Beep code by default for post was not on, which is probably why even if we wanted to, we would not have heard any beep in the first place for a successful post. Now for the ugly gray BIOS, uh, the internet seems to think it's because of that's the version that I use, the latest one. But if you drop down a few versions, maybe something will look a bit more prettier as long as it's compatible with the Ryzen 3 chip. So let's answer the questions we asked at the beginning. Number one, what was the huge mistake that Matt made? Yep, he chose the wrong compatible parts. He assumed it should be compatible. And yes, they should be, but not without a BIOS flash update. Now, having said this, I would never advise any first time builders, or even if you're not a first time builder, to go and buy a Ryzen 2 board just to update the BIOS so that you can put a Ryzen 3 chip or anything further so that you save some money if that was the case. Do not do this, it's a really bad idea. BIOS flash should be left alone and just because there's an update firmware doesn't mean you have to apply it. If your computer is working fine, leave it alone because it can be very problematic for a lot of people. I kind of remember when Ryzen 2 came out and people were trying to upgrade their Ryzen 1 chip 
to Horizon 2, then there was issues with all this bio stuff. And I think the board partners or maybe even AMD was sending out some processors just to be able to update the BIOS. Now, having said this, if you're a first time builder and those are the only parts you have, your system will not even pause if you haven't got a compatible processor in the first place. So yeah, if you've bought a Ryzen 2 board and a Ryzen 3 chip, you can't even post it to update the BIOS. And if I didn't have the Ryzen 2 chip, I wouldn't have been able to do it neither. That's a bit of a problem. So I do not advise this. So what's the solution if you're a first time builder? I would say to you, do not be adventurous in trying to pick parts as a combination. Go to a source that you trust, whether it's online or YouTube, but you know, be careful if there are some idiots out there as well. And just kind of emulate and copy their configuration. At least you should get the same board and the same processor that they're going for. And I would say to some extent, maybe even the RAM for much better optimization and if you're doing a gaming pc in my opinion you should try and get the best graphics card you can but at least try to emulate and copy what they have again in terms of getting the best out of those components but when it comes to the build process the biggest mistake that matt has made and that you should never make is not to check for post outside of the case before you assemble into the case and i've explained this a lot in a couple of videos you can check this one up there for more details now, question number two, why did it take me longer to troubleshoot, although this is something I should know because this is very basic? That's because I made the mistake of kind of uh, believing or trusting what Matt was telling me was the truth. To his credit, he wouldn't have known this, and he actually did give me the correct information eventually, but because he said it was compatible and because he told me he used an app for compatibility, he did a PC gaming simulation build, and it looks like he did some homework, I kind of overlooked it. That is a mistake from my part. And we come to the troubleshooting issue, which means if I'm gonna troubleshoot something, and this is something I retweet for you all the time, I need to know everything about that build. I need to know all the parts, exactly how they are, and I need to know the history, what's happened before, which is why I always ask you to do this. And if you are gonna join our Facebook group, I need to give you a warning, please come prepared to give all this information. Otherwise, it's almost impossible for us to help you because a tiny detail can make or break the troubleshoot. And of course, in terms of compatibility, it looks like you can't just blindly trust any compatible apps out there. I've never used build codes, I don't know what they are, but certainly PC Part Picker would have highlighted one issue. Although, yeah, you don't really rely entirely on it, but it's kind of a good start. You know, a lot of us, we use PC Part Picker. Go with that, quite good. So the third question was, what other first time PC building mistakes did they make we can learn from? And obviously, first thing for me, it's the budget allocation. Now the case, although it's really nice because it came with a cooler and everything, but this for me is an overkill in a first time build. I would rather spend less money on the case. Aesthetics never been my thing anyway. Uh, I'm more for noise level, so I would get a quieter case, but spend probably half of that money and put the rest of that budget in a better part, like the definitely GPU or maybe even uh, other SSDs, hard drive and whatnot. Second was the PSU, and in that bit, it was an overkill. 850 watt, way too much. I would have gotten for much less. The general rule of our firm is that you get a wattage calculation from online or even from PC Power Picker. And if you might be considering an upgrade in the near future, then you just multiply that by 1.5 factor generally. But in Matt's case, he's not planning to upgrade anytime soon or not at all. So I would have just saved some money and get a lower wattage, but still good brand power supply unit. Third, let's talk about the GPU for a gaming rig. You want the best possible GPU. And in this budget, it is very, very unbalanced. You should get a nicer GPU than the 1660, although it's a decent GPU, but if you're gonna have a 1600 pounds budget, you want to get a decent GPU. And that's where a lot of the money or most of the money in terms of allocation of budget should go. And last but not least, at least for now, is the monitor. I'm not sure what kind of monitor he's using, but the monitor is often overlooked in a build, especially for budget allocation. It doesn't have to be cheap, but the monitor will make or break your experience in gaming. You certainly want something with either G-Sync or V-Sync, and you certainly want higher refresh rates. Now, 
120 would be advisable. The sweet spot seems to be 144 hertz in terms of size and resolution. As long as you're sitting reasonably kind of close to your monitor, you don't really need 32 inch and you don't really need 4K. I think a sweet spot is between 24 inch to 28 inch at 1440p and 144 hertz refresh rate with some form of G-Sync or V-Sync ability. How often are you gonna look at the case to be fair? I mean, obviously this is a personal thing, but I'm just saying if you want better gaming experience, that's where the money should be spent. And now a shout out to those who correctly guessed the issue, especially for the no display. So we have Mr. Pooh says, possibly it's the third gen Ryzen and the motherboard he used. Steven Johnson says, it needs a BIOS update, 3000 series need a x570 or b550 to go with that one superfido says why is he using the wrong pci express slot for the graphics card zulu 67 says a lot of these x series processors don't actually post until there is a bios update applied to the motherboard the x470 chipset is decent but i think they are focusing more on the b450 and x570 boards now not sure if that processor will work out of the box with that board Bearded Banter says, flash BIOS update if you have not resolved already. I say this as I have just built my first rig and had the same no display flash BIOS update and boom, resolve issue. And finally, we have Tim who says, not sure that CPU is supported on that chipset without a BIOS update. So well done to you, Lars. You are absolutely correct. Now, I have done a full series on uh, troubleshooting. It needs a bit of retouch, but you can go watch them there if you have other issues to do with your computer, which is not turning on or not booting up properly. But if you also want to improve your relationship with text generally, now check out this video down here, and I will see you in the next one. This was Ash from My Tech, helping you go from Moon to be too techy. Until next time, peace out.